All right, well, thank you everybody for joining the class. Uh, we're gonna be going over first the MLS tax suite and uh, how we can use that to help us in uh, finding uh, a way to find new listings. Uh, I use it sometimes to help me farm a neighborhood, uh, but also use GIS mapping to help farm too as well. Um, so we're just gonna kind of go through the MLS tax suite, how we can use it to find absentee owners, um, for residential and uh, land. Also uh, in the MLS tax suite, um, how we can, little tricks uh, that can help save you time as far as cutting down on uh, writing with pen and paper, a bunch of people's names. Um, uh, let's see what else we'll kind of go over. Uh, kind of to, uh, you can kind of look to see if it's possibly a, maybe a, a, a rental um, you know, I, I, I think in my case, um, you know, targeting some of those people, uh, residential home wise, um, you know, maybe they had a bad experience with a tenant and they might be ready to sell. Um, so those are a couple of things we're going to kind of go over in the MLS tax suite. Uh, then GIS mapping, uh, everybody should have, uh, GIS mapping. Uh, for whatever counties you work, uh, it's a great idea to put those on your favorites. I use GIS mapping uh, every day. Every single day I'm in GIS mapping, uh, just depending upon what county, but um, that is something I use every single day. Uh, as far as residential wise, you should never not know the approximate uh, uh, road frontage, uh, but there's so many ways uh, that this free tool that everybody in the world has access to if you have internet. Uh, it is not exclusive to agents, of course. Um, some some uh, counties have better JS mapping sites than others, but at the end of the day, they're all a good resource for us to use and to know how to use. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started in the MLS tax suite. Um, if you do uh, have your laptop or uh, if you're using a desktop even, uh, go ahead and obviously log in to Paragon. Um, and we'll go to the little tax icon right here uh, at the very top. Chris, I want to we have Edward Scott who's here from Sunville. Welcome, Edward. And I noticed we also have Lucretia from Santee, so they will not have this. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I thumb, I'm in the Coastal Association. Um, I know on their MLS, they also have like a little tax icon. Uh, hopefully it's similar to y'all's, but uh, thank you guys for joining this morning. Um, so it'll, you hit the little tax icon right there at the top, and we're going to go to uh, CRS data tax search. All right, so this is the page that should be showing. And we're going to go to this big blue icon called Advanced Search and Map Search. So this is what it should look like. Um, so I'm going to input right here in this box is the county that you're going to want. Like if, uh, you know, if you're interested in looking at stuff in Richland County, this is where you would put Richland County. Whatever county uh, you're, you're interested in searching, that's where you'd input this information. Uh, so basically what we're doing on this page, we're going to uh, be um, putting in criteria, if you will. Um, you don't, I don't fill in every box. I'm not saying I know everything about this, but I know enough to be dangerous, I feel like. Um, so, uh, you know, so we're going to, we're in Richland, we're searching Richland County. We've already dictated that. Um, you know, if you want to go by city, um, you could say, we're, since I'm doing Richland County, we'll do, um, let's see, we'll do, we'll do, um, let's just say Elgin, even though part of Elgin's in Richland County, part of it's not. And our, so you can put in the zip code if you want to. Obviously, we're going to be going by city, so it's not pertinent. Uh, some cities have different different zip codes, like 
say I was doing Columbia, we have multiple zip codes for Columbia. So it might be a great idea uh, if you're in a large city, you're searching a large city to go ahead and input that zip code. Uh, that way you can narrow down your criteria that you're searching for. That way you can get better search results. Uh, if you want to, you can input a, a subdivision name in this, this space. Uh, in this case, I'm not. Um, you can do it by school district. Um, it's a very useful tool. Uh, if you've got somebody, you know, maybe looking, maybe you've got a buyer that's looking, I want my kids to go to Richland School District 1. Um, well, this is a space where you can input that and there's no homes on the market that they particularly like. Um, well, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to try and find a listing and get a listing. And also, you could also get both sides that way. And if your clients don't like it, well, so be it, you got a listing. Um, but that's a way you could, uh, if you've got a client looking for a certain school district, you can input that information there um, and try and then we'll continue to fill this out. But uh, it's a way you can also, um, you know, try and find a, a home suitable for your clients looking in a specific school district. Um, so I don't typically fill out the last sales price. I don't fill out the deed and uh, deed book, deed page. Um, I don't do the sales within the last, you know, you can see there uh, it's months to years. Uh, generally, in my thinking, the reason why I don't do that is because if somebody just uh, bought three months ago, they're most likely not gonna be wanting to sell their home that quickly. Not saying it doesn't happen, but uh, and, you know, as far as a broad spectrum, that's not what I'm going to do uh, because I just feel like one, you're going to have very few search results, and two, like I said, they're probably not ready to sell. Um, so we'll keep going down here. So uh, this is a very important um, uh, category here: search by property characteristics. Um, so, like I was saying, if you've got a client. Uh, looking for a home in a certain school district, you have input that school district. Uh, you know your client wants a, uh, at least a five bedroom home. Uh, you can do that here. Uh, bedrooms, maybe say four to five. Um, you know, if they want a two story home, you can do that here. Uh, square footage, uh, the improvements, improvement type. Uh, maybe they want a five bedroom home with five acres. Well, right here, you can input that acreage. Um, you know, if they want, want it, you know, 2015 or newer home, you can do that here. Uh, how many bathrooms? Um, it's a very good resource. So um, we'll click on um, improvement type. Scroll down. To, I'm going to hit residential just for today's training. Um, I'm going to say uh, we'll just do one to two stories. Uh, we'll do two to two to four bedrooms. I bet, yeah, excuse me. We'll do two to five bedrooms, just kind of get a broad idea. Um, I'm not going to restrict this. Uh, very much, but like I said, you can play around with it and restrict it all you want. Um, we'll do two, so three bedrooms. All right, and we'll, we'll I'm going to do absentee owner. Like I said, you guys, when you're doing this yourself, um, you can put it whatever restrictions you want to on it. Um, but I've had I've had good success when I especially when I first started out, I came to Columbia or back to South Carolina and came to Columbia. And I know about two people. Uh, so uh, absentee owners was uh, something I, I was taught and I learned. Um, and it, it really helped my business um, and still does to this day. It's still something I push uh, in marketing to try and get new listings. Uh, so... <clears throat> In saying that, so what this is doing, I'm going to click on absentee owner and we'll just do out of state people. Now you can do in state as well. So basically the difference here and remember our, our criteria that we've input 
is searching for city of Elgin in Richland County, which part of Elgin is in Kershaw County, part of it is in Richland County. Um, but like I said, we're so we're looking in Elgin. We are looking for um, what if they do a two to five bedroom or four bedroom home, uh, at least two to three uh, bathrooms. And so what this is doing is when I we go to hit submit in just a second, it's going to populate people who own a home to that criteria, but who don't actually live in the home and who don't live in the state. Um, I've had good success with out of state people like doing this kind of type of criteria with land and residential. Uh, so we're going to hit out of state. And then we are going to hit submit. Now, obviously, here you can uh, search by the MLS listing um, if it was an expired. Um, you know, that's a good way. You know, that one time they were interested in selling. Uh, you could, you know, um, and the property did obviously didn't sell, but it meets all the rest of the criteria that we have input. Um, you know, if you're doing it like that, I definitely wouldn't restrict it too much as far as your uh, criteria that you've input, uh, just because from the very beginning, there's going to be less expired. Um, so we're going to go ahead and hit submit and let's see what comes up, if anything. Okay, so no results were found. So what we'll do. We'll go back and we will loosen up the criteria. So we won't put a limit on the bathrooms. Um, let's just go ahead and get rid of that because there may not be many at all. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and hit submit again, see if anything comes up now. Okay, so we uh, the results that I deleted the number of bathrooms and ba um, bedrooms. Uh, so the search results came up with 168 properties in Elgin, South Carolina, where uh, the owner of the home does not live in the state. Uh, so that obviously tells me, A, it's either a vacation home or is most likely a um, rental. So that in my um experiences those are good people to kind of uh you know uh prospect so let's see all right so if you notice the little red tags here that was sold uh just last year uh that was sold this year so those are people obviously i'm not going to try and um uh, uh, prospect so we will come on down i know that one's in wood creek farms it tells me right there um Obviously, it goes, it's in alphabetical order according to street names. Uh, let's go to this one 104 Big John Road. Uh, look at the subdivision, Robin Hood Acres. That's appropriate. So let's check this out. All right, we got a little picture there. Um, so it's a ranch style home. Uh, let's see. So the owner, Mr. Horace Malone, lives in Lithuania, Georgia. I probably butchered that name. Um, so he bought it in 2004 for $32,000. Um, obviously that's the seller. So he has probably got this as a rental. Um, that would be a very good idea. Uh, so yeah, the home was built in 1964. It's a three bedroom, one and a half bath. Uh, just over a thousand square feet. So if we scroll on down, we can see the listing archive. So he bought it in 2004 and he still owns it to this day. Uh, so this would definitely be somebody, if I'm just blanket, you know, trying to get some listings, this would 100% be somebody that I would uh, A, send a flyer or B, send a handwritten note to. Um, I used to always do handwritten notes. Uh, obviously you've got their mailing address, their name. Hey, um, Mr. Malone, I'm Chris Harris with ERA Wilder Realty. I noticed you owned a home on Big John Road. Uh, you know, um, and then just kind of whatever you, 
feel, you know, obviously asking if they're interested in selling and, hey, I've got experience in selling an Elgin, Elgin, you know, promote yourself as um, knowledgeable and the uh, 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 top listing agent in that area. Um, so, yeah, I've had good success with uh, handwritten notes. They're very timely. But in my opinion, they're very effective just in the case that, you know, you think about it when you get an invitation for a wedding or something, you know, typically those are handwritten or either they're very, you know, pretty or whatever. It's not a bill. You know, I, I always, when I go to the mailbox, I open up bills last. If it's, you know, in a little envelope, obviously it's not in the shape of something of a bill or junk mail. Uh, I'm, I'm going to open up those first when I go to the mailbox because I want to see what's going on. Uh, same kind of idea, train of thought with sending a uh, handwritten note. Uh, it doesn't have to, you know, keep it short, you know, maybe like five sentences or something and sign it, your realtor, Chris Harris, your realtor, Mike Taylor, uh, you know, make it personal. Um, but, you know, the busier I've gotten, uh, I, I still do handwritten notes, uh, but in my case, I've kind of switched to sending flyers out. Um, just because it's it's a little less time consuming um but i've still had good results with that as well so uh, you know maybe try both uh, see what kind of results you get and uh you know do what you feel is right uh so yep we're gonna that's one thing you can do there um like i said you can really um you know play around with um uh, restricting your criteria and, you know, how that can benefit you. Um, so we'll do Richland County again. Of course, we're going to kind of, we'll still a different search. Um, so once again, we're in Richland County. Uh, let's do city of uh, Eastover, one I'm very familiar with. We'll do zip code you know, 044. Once again, we're just uh, inputting our criteria here. We're going to switch it up a little bit and we will do uh, land. So, because there is money in land. So we'll do check residential. So basically if it's zoned residential uh, land, that's what you'd want to hit. All right, acreage, maybe you got a client looking for one to 10 acres. So we'll do one. All right, uh, there, obviously we're looking for land now. Uh, there's no reason to input the uh, number of stories because uh, if it's vacant land, there obviously shouldn't be a home on it. So we'll hit vacant land. Uh, once again, we'll do absentee owner. Let's do in state and out of state because Eastover is not that big. So uh, we'll do both criteria there, but absentee owners. All right, we'll hit submit. We should have some results. All right, got a lot of results here, 823 properties that meet that criteria. Um, so you know that these people, um, they could, well, they shouldn't live on the property because I checked the box for vacant land. So I'm gonna scroll down here. Um, all right, I know we're exactly where this one is. Let's look here, a Beaver Hut Trail in Eastover. All right, so it's a land use, residential land lot, property type residential. That meets the criteria that we input. So you've got a client uh, in particular looking in Eastover, maybe your client's looking in uh, city of Columbia in a certain zip code. That's where you would put the city, the zip code, you know, restrict it how you want. Uh, you know, they're looking to build a custom home. 
Uh, well, obviously you make sure you've got the builder and all that so you can get paid for that. But this is a way that you can get paid for the land on both sides. You'll have the listing side and the buyer side. Um, so this person lives in Miami, Florida. They've owned it since 2018 and paid $56,000. So it's pretty good. Um, we can see tax history. We can see right here, the acreage. Uh, if you remember, we put in one to 10 acres. That meets their criteria. It says the acreage here is 1.13 acres. Uh, zone uh, rule undeveloped. Tells you the school district. Uh, you know, if we go on down, it's not in a FEMA flood zone or it's minimal risk, excuse me. Um, so it's never been listed as far as um, we know. So this would definitely be somebody. Um, you know, if I have a client looking in Eastover for one to 10 acres, this would definitely be a possibility or somebody that I would prospect, uh, send the flyer, send a handwritten note to, to see if they were willing to list their property. And I've actually sent this person a note, a handwritten letter, and they didn't respond. But, you know, um, as far as, uh, you know, results from sending stuff out, um, I would suspect somewhere, you know, if I sent out 200 uh, flyers or letters, um, I get decent results. It, at times it's mixed. Obviously it's not always the same. Um, but even if I get one listing from sending out uh, 200 flyers or letters, uh, you know, I, I think that's a win. You get it to close and you get paid. Uh, it's obviously paying for your postage that you used. It's obviously, you know, um, as far as your time, the, I mean, it's a way to get your foot in the door also, like this is in a subdivision that's not that developed. Uh, so it's a way to get your foot in the door at times, say, hey, I just sold this, I just listed it, you know, send that out to other people in the neighborhood. Uh, hey, look what I did. You know, I know my stuff in this neighborhood now. Um, you know, promote yourself like that. Uh, I did it in a neighborhood, also another neighborhood in East Dover. I'm currently I'm now recognized as a neighborhood realtor, and this is I used this right. What I'm showing you guys, this is exactly what I did, and found uh, it, and and it just progressed to the point now that I'm recognized as a neighborhood realtor in that in that neighborhood. Uh, so it does work. Um, so I'll show you guys something here. Um, go back. So a little time saver you can do. Uh, so obviously we've got all these names. Uh, and unless you, let's say you're doing flyers um, and you've got all these names, it meets the criteria. Now this can be done, whether it's residential or land. Um, let's say you, you, you want to send a flyer to everybody in that criteria that you input that, and it meets that criteria. So something you can do to save time. Let's say, in, and you're doing flyers. Uh, if you'll see right here, it says create labels. And yep, it tells you that. I'll let you guys read that on your own. So here, uh, you, obviously you can go buy from Office Depot uh, to make labels. They've got um, uh, labels you can buy, whether it be for your return address or whatnot. Um, but I always, I usually typically buy this label sheet that looks like this. Uh, I think there's like 30 or so on it. Um, but yeah, or pick out whatever label that you bought. And it even tells you Avery 5160, 5161, so on. So here you can, um, uh, if you want to skip records with no zip code, well, if it doesn't have a zip code, how's it gonna get there? So obviously you want to do that. Um, so this is talking about what you want the label to look like when it gets printed. Uh, the addressee is displayed as first name first. Uh, I like to do that, uh, but you do whatever you want. And uh, the address used would always be the owner's address. Uh, Cause a lot of times, you know, we're, you know, I look, I'm looking at absentee owners that don't obviously live on the property. So you want that piece of mail, obviously, to go to the owner's address, where they their mailing address, where they live. 
Uh, I usually don't include or current resident. Uh, so yeah, this is a way that you can uh, save yourself some time. It says create labels. Put that blue button here. It will create some labels. And this will hopefully it's still screen share. All right, so now we've created labels. And obviously you put your uh, label making paper and then copier uh, and print them out. This is a very quick way to, uh, you know, save yourself time from writing the address, but at the same time, you lose some of that personal touch uh, by doing it this way, um, which in my opinion, that does way also. Uh, but like I said, you guys play with it, you know, see how sending flyers and, and maybe um, printing labels, um, you know, works for you. Obviously, you can get a lot more out, but it, you know, you lose that personal touch of a handwritten letter and, you know, um, but you can also handwrite the letter and print the labels, do it that way. Um, it's up to y'all, y'all play with it and see what hap what works best for you. Let's see. All right, um, I guess question time for MLS tax suite. That's I have it. one thing to add that Chris doesn't, uh, blow his horn too often, but he um, started in this neighborhood. The lots that he looked at uh, were selling for 10,000 above. Many of us would have just said it's not worth it. In the last year, Chris has listed six houses. Two of them are sold. I believe you have three or four right now. The average sales price is north of 300,000. And that's because he went in there, became the neighborhood expert, and he started uh, like I said, he came here, he didn't know a soul. So he started with absentee uh, owners and he just worked it and worked it. And I know all of us would like to have six sales in, a na in any neighborhood, 300,000 and up. Uh, that's a pretty good thing. So good job, Chris. Thank you. Uh, uh, any other questions from anybody? Um, Chris, I have a question. So when you put in that land and residential, because I was trying to follow them, I'm like, oh, so did you do it under that first little tab where it says uh, property type, or did you do it under the, the one that's across from it? Uh, like two of them. Yeah, we'll, we'll go back through it. You know. Okay, so to recap, your question was, because this is where we would have done that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, so we've got our city. Um, uh, so the property characteristics. Now you are asking. Okay, uh, so to stipulate basically land to residential, uh, we can do our property type. Uh, so if we hit, you know, we can hit residential either way because primarily most of the time you're going to be looking a for a building lot or a a, a home. So either way, you're going to hit residential most of the time, unless you just got a client looking for maybe a 50 acre hunting track, or maybe they want a homestead, something like that. Um, you might would hit farm instead of residential in this area. Uh, so your improvement type, if you're looking for a home, uh, you could do something in there, uh, you know, and obviously fill in your criteria here, but if you're just looking for land, uh, you know, and you know the specified acreage, put that in right there, but hit vacant land, check that box, and then, uh, you know, uh, obviously nobody, if it's vacant land, nobody's going to live on it. So it's going to be an absentee owner either way. Uh, you know, maybe check in state and out of state. Maybe they have a track of land right beside where they live. That's very typical. Um, and sometimes those people are ready to sell, sometimes not. But um, yeah, that's that's kind of how you can differentiate between residential properties and just land. Uh, it's kind of, you know, just go through it and, you know, it's pretty simple. Um, and if anybody ever needs help, you know, send me an email, call me, text me. Uh, I can, we can walk you through it um, and, and, and help you. Um, Get your criteria right and your, your subject matter right in this field. This is the most important page, uh, obviously, in, in trying to get this correct. Um, 
sometimes it's, it's, you know, just depending on where you're looking, though, on how much you tighten your criteria, like you guys saw me do earlier, uh, I came back <laughs> with no results. Um, so uh, and, and another thing, um, it's pretty good on having good uh, up-to-date uh, information, but there's always that those times when it's, you know, maybe something sold very recently and, you know, that's not going to be correct. Um, but uh, I use this and, and it does definitely work. Um, when you don't have anything going on and you're scratching your head wondering, all right, I know I need to do some prospecting. Uh, I, I feel like I've done everything I know to do. I'm farming neighborhoods. Well, this is just another avenue, uh, you know, as far as using absentee owners, um, you know, um, that, that, that definitely works. Um, but there, obviously, it takes time. But that's all right when you have nothing going on. Um, and trying to get business, here's another avenue to get business. So um, if there's no other questions, uh, we will go into uh, GIS mapping, one of my favorites. Let's see if I can do this. Probably not. That's not what I wanted to go into. Okay. Is it still sharing, I guess? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and uh, disclaimer, I'm not very technology. I'm not very good with technology, but even I can look up this stuff. So you guys can do it too. All right. So just uh, for today's uh, class, we're just going to look at Richland County. Um, you can certainly Google if you're... Uh, let's say you're in Orangeburg County. Um, you can literally go Google JS mapping Orangeburg County, South Carolina. You know, you'll find, you'll end up finding uh, basically a similar site to this. Uh, I've got Orangeburgs, I know it's a little bit different, but you know, I've got, uh, I will share with everybody basically um, all the links that I have. I've got, I don't know, probably at least your, somewhere in the neighborhood of about eight different counties, GIS mapping uh, websites. Well, you guys uh, won't have to go and look and search, you know, oh, is this the right place? Uh, we'll get those out to you. Um, but like I said, if you're somewhere in Somerville or something, it's very simple to uh, find the GIS mapping. Um, everybody, every county is a little different, um, but at the end of the day, you can basically do all the same things. So uh, I use GS mapping a couple of a uh, few different ways. Um, it can help you. Maybe you got a target neighborhood that you're farming. Um, uh, I, I'll sh I'll show an example of a neighborhood that I farm, um, um, and and show you how it can be beneficial to you. Um, also, if I've got a listing coming up and or, or I'm trying to do research on a possible listing, um, you know, something that helps me a lot is doing listings and, and knowing the, re doing your research before you list it. Um, that is so crucial, but because if you, if you're putting something on the market and, and you know, that you, you know, especially, you know, even if it's a large track of land with a residential home on it, or if it's just land, um, you know, or maybe you've got land and, um, somebody calls you and says well can it be split up into four tracks of land uh four separate lots instead of one uh i'm going to show you you know maybe how you can help yourself figure that out obviously you need to call the county and zoning and whatnot but um knowing the road frontage knowing what is zoned for um those types of things uh wanting to see if there's you know maybe you've got a client and uh, you're, you're working with a buyer and they're interested in a home and well uh, Chris is there any wetlands on the property uh, is is it in a flood zone area uh, look I'm going to show you how you can look up that stuff that stuff is very crucial uh, it could mean the, mean the difference between a lot of money and a little bit of money they're going to have to pay for it. or if you know they're looking for a building lot and you know that uh, 
is is there wetlands on that property you know let's say you got a 10 acre lot and um they want to build a home there with that will, will this be a suitable lot based on what I, you can find out just right here uh maybe you've got a listing and um you're trying to come up with a price and you know obviously you've done your your um uh cmas and all that good stuff well cmas don't show you if there's wetlands on the property people don't want to pay for wetlands um this is zero value most of the time uh you know i listed a property that was all wetlands and was able to sell it for like three thousand dollars out in the middle of nowhere uh but i i knew that it was all wetlands i couldn't put a you know maybe an eighteen thousand dollar value per acre like maybe it should have went for but because we knew it was wetlands and um, did my research. I knew that, and that's um, unfortunate. But you know, at the same time, it got sold. Um, so you can use this for multiple different different ways. Maybe you don't have a plat or a survey, uh, and your client wants to know you work buyer or a listing. Uh, you want they want to know well how about how many acres do I have here? I don't have a survey. I don't have a plat and. Unfortunately, I don't have the money. I don't have $2,000 sitting around to get my three acres surveyed to know uh, how big it is. I, th I think it's five acres. Well, I'm gonna show you how you can map it out and get an approximate very close to what it actually is. Um, no, obviously it's not a plat or a survey, but you'll have a good idea of uh, the property size. Um, there's no reason ever not to know the approximate uh, approximately how many road footage you have, uh, maybe how many, uh, uh, the water frontage, like here, this is in Lake Carolina, uh, here in Columbia that we're looking at now, uh, but we can map out how many feet of water frontage. Uh, water frontage means dollar signs. So, um, you know, maybe when you're out there looking at the, and I always look at GIS mapping before I go look at something, and I and print the map out when I'm out there. That way I have an idea. I know how, how much, uh, how many water, how much water frontage, maybe how much road frontage, but that also helps me by determining, uh, maybe looking for uh, property markers, uh, old, you know, old uh, irons that are gonna be on the corners. Uh, even though you don't have a survey, you don't have a plant, at some point that property had uh, property boundary markers on it. So I use this to help me um, figure out where the, because people want to know, hey, what am I buying? Well, if I could find those markers, uh, that can certainly help with that. And this is a way, um, if you don't have those other tools available to you, documents, you can get a pretty good idea of where you need to be looking. Um, so if we'll hit the hourglass right here. Um, let's just say, uh, I'm gonna put in an address here. Chris, would you back up and show me that hourglass? Right here. So I'm gonna input a uh, property address here. We'll go to uh, 212 Lakeview Road. And it does auto populate. All right, so I'm very familiar with this property. Um, for those of you, We've got people looking in East over this property will actually come available soon. Let's don't tell the MLS I told you that though. Um, <laughs> so here we are. This is a, basically a uh, 155 acre uh, lake. So things to do, because uh, we do not have a plat or a survey for this property. So uh, in order to help me find the property, this is a residential home on this on a uh, small lake. So um, that needs to go away. Can I drag this out of the way? Yeah. All right, so like I said, every uh, county mapping system is a little bit different, but basically you can use the same tools to figure out, uh, to find what you uh, want to do. So if we X out of that, uh, we've got this um, little tool right here. And if you hover over it, it says measure. All right. So you got like a little cross, little T there. Um, so um, you've got somebody who wants to know, well, can I tear that home down and build two homes? And you've got a client, they're in investing or something. Uh, you know, 
think about this, not just this lot, you know, you know, look at it in a way of, uh, you know, other pieces of property and how it can help you, obviously. Um, you know, so you got this, a large lot, something like this. Uh, they want to know, well, how many homes could I build on that? You know, you've got an investor looking to build new homes or something or rental properties. Um, you know, you can map out the road frontage because how much road frontage you have obviously trans, uh, transpires to maybe how many times the property can be broken up. Um, but like I said, this can also help you know where to find these markers at. So you can know pretty much exactly, show somebody what you have listed for sale or show your buyers, hey, this is what you're buying. Uh, so we just uh, click there, click there. All right, so these are approximations. That's very important to remember. But like I said, it can definitely help you find stuff. Uh, so the road frontage here on this lot uh, is probably 230 feet, not 232. Um, so in our MLS, I know it asks you to input the road frontage. You should never leave that blank anymore after knowing how to do this. Um, because it is, it can be maybe not on every single time, but it is crucial. Maybe you've got an encroachment on the property that your client wants to buy. Uh, this is a way you, and you don't have a plat or a survey. It's very common, I feel like, for people selling their homes uh, not to have a survey. I very rarely see them in the associated documents in our MLS, um, you know, but, you know, maybe there's the fences, you know, or the, the driveway of the neighbor's uh, houses encroaching. Well, this is maybe a good way you can go out there, find the dimension you can do. You can find the approximate dimensions of the property, um, you know, and, and find those survey markers, um, and, and hopefully determine if there are encroachments. It's another way you could use this. So if we keep dragging, um, we find that that's probably 260 feet is what I would input. Um, you know, and you can make as many points as you want. And that's congruent with all GIS mapping I've used. Uh, so if we complete these, so what, so somewhat of a rectangle or square and click on that, you'll see that it populated right here uh, as far as area, 1.23 acres. So it might be 1.2, it might be 1.25 acres, uh, but we've got an approximation now that's really close. Um, we would definitely feel good about saying it's just over an acre. Uh, maybe we're doing uh, input and public remarks. Well. You know, we've got a five bedroom home on just over an acre, you know, um, so we can, we, that would be something I'd feel very comfortable saying now, because uh, I don't have a plat, I don't have a survey. Um, so this is a way that you can, you know, you can use this in several different ways, but this is just one way uh, using these tools on GIS mapping, you can figure out these types of things. Uh, if, you know, uh, like for instance, on Lake Murray, you have to have at least 100 feet of uh, water frontage on your property in order to basically qualify for inputting a dock approval. Uh, obviously, you can see now how you could determine um, if it's 50 foot, well, you're going to need a neighbor. Uh, you are going to share a dock in order to have a dock because obviously 50 feet is less than 100 feet. Uh, so that's just another way, you know, if, you, in, uh, if you've got uh, we all like to sell properties on the lake because of the price tag, uh, but no, uh, do your research, know how many water, how much water frontage maybe it takes to qualify to have a dock. Uh, they'll give that information out. Just, you know, in our case, it's Dominion Energy, who you would call for Lake Murray. Um, they'll tell you. Uh, and, you know, by figuring that stuff out, you, can, you don't have a plat or a survey. It's just another way you could find that information out. Uh, because obviously that's going to, if you're listing something or you're buying something, uh, if you can have a dock or you can't have a dock, there's going to be uh, repercussions for the price, obviously, good or bad. Uh, so this is a way you can figure that out uh, and have a good idea. Uh, so uh, this is a way you can figure out stuff with the, the uh, measuring tool. Uh, so if we click on and... Um, 
in my experiences, most of the GIS mapping tools do have some form of this. We're gonna hit that layers uh, button. This is so crucial, so important. Uh, knowing uh, how to use this section of GIS, GIS mapping, I'm just gonna click off of the measuring details to get that kind of clean looking again. Uh, so we're going to if we look over here, let me get that out of the way again. Uh, so you, there's multiple things here uh, you can check. Right now it's kind of like on parcels. So yeah, let's keep the parcels up. Gives us kind of like boundary lines, if you will, for individual lots. Um, there's so much you can do here uh, from police stations to sheriff regions. It'll show you, okay, this is all like shaded now. Uh, and that would tell you that um, that is Richland County Sheriff's Office. Uh, your voting locations, magistrate districts, there's a lot going on here. Uh, school districts. Uh, so you can figure out where your uh, maybe um, they, your client has children and they want them to go to a certain school district. Well, here's another way you could figure that out instead of just Google. Uh, so if we hit this tab, environmental, and then it expanded. All right, so this is something I use very often. So you'll see watersheds, FEMA flood zones, wetlands, the type of soil. Uh, those are very important things. Um, you know, whether or not it's a resale, or it's uh, vacant land, looking to build a custom home on. These are very important factors um, in helping you be more knowledgeable for your client and how to advise them, in my opinion. Uh, so if we click the little wetlands button. All right, so there is a little bit of wetlands. And because I know this neighborhood extremely well, I will show you, um, you know, uh, how this comes into play. So, for instance, I just sold that property. I just sold that property. Um, so, these are also lots in the same neighborhood. Well, this is uh, forested wetland. Basically, there is absolutely no reason you would ever, in my opinion, want to uh, try and get these listings. Um, there's basically no use for them. Uh, you can't build on them. Um, you know, um, so if you expand your mind and think about it, if you're, if you're farming for a neighborhood or if you're trying to find uh, research things uh, for an upcoming listing, uh, you'd be surprised there's, there is wetlands in places you wouldn't think they would be. Um, so it's very important to, to look this stuff up because um, you can be more knowledgeable. Uh, maybe you've got a buyer and they're looking to buy a property uh, a listing, well, go he, go to your GIS mapping, uh, you know, and it's 20 acres. They've got it listed for, you know, just for easy, uh, being easy, you know, $10,000 an acre. Well, uh, Mr. Listing Agent may have not done their research. I typically find that people don't do their research. <laughs> they just put a number on it from CMA, do a CMA and put a number on it. Uh, well, um, you know, put, put this proof, we're going to offer X amount of dollars. You know, there was five acres of wetlands in that 20 acres. You know, you can't ever alter that. So we're not going to pay you for that. And here's my proof uh, of there being wetlands. This is why my buyer is now going to offer you X amount of dollars because there's five acres of wetlands on this 20 acre home site. Um, you know, and it can work both sides, buyers or sellers. Um, if you discover wetlands for your on your listings, uh, maybe not so good. Um, but just you know, it'll help you down the road being upfront with people. Hey, there's an acre of wetlands. Um, we know that we, we took into account that on the price because you can't ever alter it. But and sometimes it's good to find maybe an acre, maybe your clients, um, you know, it borders the side of the property. Um, or maybe it, it, the wetlands is all over to the next property next to them. Well, nobody can ever build there. They don't want neighbors. Um, you know, you, you know that ahead of time. 
um, that, that nobody can ever alter the lot next to your clients. So, you know, you can use it in a wide variety of ways. Um, so we're gonna click off of the wetlands. Let's bring up the flood zones. So this is also very important, uh, knowing where your flood zones are. Uh, obviously, you know, with flood zones comes flood insurance, uh, which can be very costly. Uh, knowing that ahead of time, being informative to your clients, whether it's buying or selling, uh, it's very crucial to, to uh, know that information. So you can look up that. Uh, one thing I also like to use it for, we can if we click on that little tab, it says elevation. All right, this will tell us, you know, your client's like, I'm 80 years old and, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a two acre property or I'm looking for a home, but, um, I, you know, I, I, I'm old and then I, I don't really want to deal, contend with uh, topography issues. Uh, you can look at this right here without even going out there and know if it's pretty flat, if it's flat, or if it's like a mountain. Uh, so if you hit the contours button right here. So if you'll look at that, uh, that would be 170 to 160. So there's a 10 foot drop. And this is obviously the lake. Um, but you can know the, the, the topography of the land is going down. So like here, you've got like 190. And that short of a distance, it goes from 190 to 170 to 160. Um, so you can kind of get a feel for the property, um, you know, as far as the topography goes, how that goes, um, just by simply looking at this. Um, and that's a very useful tool as well. Obviously, if you're looking at a, a piece of property and it's, uh, you know, 20 acres and maybe you're trying to sell it to a, uh, a uh, builder or something of that nature. Um, and it's got it, you know, and there's, a, you know, a 60 foot to uh, topography difference across the 20 acres. Well, that might come into play whether or not they want it, you know, maybe whether or not they're going to offer you the same amount. Uh, it could definitely uh, influence your listing price of the topography of the property. Um, that, because obviously that's going to come into play with how, how marketable it is. You know, if there's a heck of a difference in the topography on uh, property, just like I've got several one acre properties uh, from front to back, they're, you know, 30 foot uh difference in topography that comes into play because obviously now you've got to look at you know your foundation how much that costs for somebody to build a new home on um they typically take longer to sell uh so you can look at these things and you can inform your client hey there the topography is is not very good um well, we're gonna have to compensate that if, if you're really if you want to sell uh my expertise tells me we should probably look at the listing price and adjust for that um, because less people are going to be willing to buy a lot or, you know, a home even um, that's got topography issues. Um, so you can know these things even without not without going to the property, you can know these things uh, and be informed. Um, or you, maybe you can cancel out you know, that property all together, if you're looking for a buyer. Um, it's very easy, very quick to do these things. Uh, so I am going to, uh, let's look at, so this is another thing we can kind of look at real quick here. A um, little side note, I guess, if you will. Uh, so we're looking at, I'm gonna take that off. Uh, so what we're looking at right now is like the Google satellite imagery. And uh, I've got a degree in forestry and wildlife management. I had to take aerial classes, aerial mapping. Um, so I can tell you right here, um, a lot of you probably do know this, some of you might not, um, but I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here um, and we can actually you know, tell what kind of trees are on, around. Let's say your client's got a 10 acre property. Is it got pine trees or is there hardwoods? Um, 
So right, I can tell you right now, this these pictures were taken in wintertime. Uh, if you'll look here, uh, those aren't dead trees. They're just trees without foliage. Uh, these are pine trees, evergreens. Um, so I can also tell you, help indicate, you know, somebody's entering this home, interested in this home right here, this subject matter home. Well, what's across the road? Uh, well, that, that right there is a pine plantation. It's, you know, um, uh, it's not developed. They simply grow pine trees for production across the road from you, Mr. Byer. Um, it's, you know, highly unlikely that that's gonna change in the near future, um, but it always could. Oops. Uh, the lot next to you, Mr. Byer, uh, has a mix of pine trees and hardwoods. Um, but there's no home on it currently. Um, so these are some things you can kind of look at. And also if you're, you know, struggling to figure out if there is a, uh, the topography or uh, wetlands, if you're struggling with that, use the trees. You can look at the trees and it, it'll give you a good inclination. Hardwoods obviously are gonna be in uh, around more water uh, in, in low lying areas, valleys, uh, wet areas uh, where pine trees most likely most of the time are not going to be. Um, you're going to have more hardwoods where the soil is uh, more wet and topography issues. That can give you some inclination of what you're actually looking at before you go. And uh, if you're struggling with trying to figure out well, uh, the topography or wetlands and stuff like that. So it's just a little side note there. Um, so I'm um, going to kind of look at how we can use the GIS mapping um, as far as um, uh, how to farm a neighborhood, how it can help you farm a neighborhood. Um, so this is definitely a neighborhood. It's, it's actually um, uh, Lake Dogwood subdivision. It's one that I farm and uh, like I think Mike was saying, you know, I recognize the neighborhood realtor here. Um, so this is all part of that neighborhood. Um, so this in farming, it helps me, uh, you know, know who the names of the owners are. Uh, like, you know, the little lot that I just clicked on. Uh, a person lives in El Paso, Texas. Uh, that gives you their mailing address. It gives you the acreage, uh, the you know, market value, which let me tell you right now, that's off. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's uh, so you can figure out, you know, if you've got a particular neighborhood, maybe the neighborhood you live in, uh, and you're like, well, I don't, uh, my HOA doesn't provide everybody's name, their mailing address, uh, but I want to start farming my neighborhood that I live in. Why wouldn't you? Uh, so this, you can go to your GIS internet mapping and figure out that information. Uh, you can know, uh, basically, there's a lot you can figure out here from how much taxes they pay. You don't have to go into MLS tax suite. You can simply go uh, right here, like to view accessor data. This will tell you their tax information, the tax amount, if they paid them, uh, stuff like that. Uh, and for instance, Richland County will tell you it's septic and well. Uh, not every county does that. I can tell you now, uh, but Richland does. Uh, so you can use it in ways to figure out in maybe the neighborhood you're looking to uh, farm. Uh, you can know, uh, obviously you can determine like this is a vacant lot that I've got highlighted right here. Uh, like this one, right? Uh, this is a home. So you can figure out how many lots are available. Uh, maybe you've got a inn with a builder uh, you, in, in that in the subject neighborhood you're farming. Um, okay, well, there's X amount of vacant lots still available. Try and get it listed. Try and uh, get a build job for it with a builder to build a spec home, let you list it. Um, but you can also figure out how many residential homes there are currently. I'll simply go through and look. Um, and those are people that you would, you know, uh, start sending uh, farming information to. 
uh, become the expert, you know, present yourself that way. Um, so just another way you can use GIS mapping to help you uh, farm a neighborhood. Um, but it's a huge resource. Uh, there's a, so much you can do with it from A to Z, really. You know, uh, it's just a lot of crucial information packed all in one place, in my opinion, um, that, that, that has been a good resource for me. Um, does anybody have questions? You no, um, so you would need to know kind of what you're looking for. Maybe if you have a client interested in a certain property, uh, you can get, go to that little hourglass and, you know, input the address. Or in this case, you, if it's an owner, if it's a listing, well, you know the owner's name. I do this all the time because I don't remember everybody I send stuff to. Like, my gosh, how could I? But uh, at the end of the phone call conversation, you know, if it's somebody interested in selling, I always say, just so I can verify I have the correct information, can you give me your name one more, your, your legal name one more time, please? And as long as I have that, I can go into GIS. And I don't sound like I'm not caring or being that guy. You know, I ask that information and I, I know there's, so now I know their legal name. Well, I can literally put in, the, their name in the search criteria in GIS mapping, you can do that for all GIS mapping, no matter the county. And I can look up where that property is. And now, you know, I didn't have to say, well, I don't remember writing you a letter or sending you a flyer, you know, and it's, it, it, as long as you have their name, you can figure out where it's at. But uh, yeah, as far as like a buyer or something, you can uh, just input the address and then you, you'll be able to, you know, research the property uh, to, to maybe help you answer your clients' questions.